Dutch Brand here, board certified specialist internist. Thank you so much for joining me even as we unpack systemic vasculitis today. If you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, the question is what are you waiting for? Vasculitis. What is vasculitis? It describes a heterogeneous group of disorders uh, or diseases that share the common definitive feature of blood vessel wall inflammation. Now, vasculitis can involve blood vessels of virtually any type, size, and location within the body and can lead to partial or complete luminal compromise with ensuing ischemia of related tissues. Systemic vasculitis refers to a group of named primary vasculitides that are immune-mediated and individually distinguished by the presence of unique clinical pathological features. Now, the clinical manifestations of systemic vasculitis are protein. It may be confined to a single organ or affect a whole range of different organ systems. Systemic vasculitis should always be considered when particular physical findings are present or multiple systems are involved. Right, so we look at the Chapel Hill classification of 2012, which sub certifies vasculitis into large vessel, medium vessel, and small vessels. So it certifies on the basis of size of vessels involved. Small vessel further divided into anchor positive, which is anti neutrophil cytoplasmic antibody, C anchor and P anchor. Either you anchor positive or you are anchor negative, right? So large vessel vasculitic syndromes, giant cell arthritis tends to hit the elderly folks usually with a high ESR and they complain of headache and jaw claudication, right? Takayasu affects middle-aged, younger to middle-aged females, and it's known as the pulse-less disease, all right? It affects the large vessels, right? And of course, a whole variety of secondary causes. Medium vasculitis from a, just from a overview perspective, we have polytrinus nodosa, which can be a standalone syndrome or can occur in the setting of chronic hepatitis B, Kawasaki disease, which mainly affects children, and secondary causes as well. Small vessel vasculitic syndrome's anchor positive is granulomatosis with polyangiitis, previously called Wegener's granulomatosis, right? Then we get eosinophilic granulomatosis with polyangiitis, is an eosinophilic GPA, previously termed Chirk Stroh syndrome. Then we got microscopic polyangiitis, and then we have secondary causes. Those small vessel vasculitic syndromes which are anchor negative. Here we're looking at Hennepin line purpura. Um, <clears throat> Hecaiglobulinemia, Bechet's disease, which causes oral and genital mucosal ulceration, anti glomerular basement membrane disease, some people call it good pasture syndrome, which gives you hemoptysis together with hematuria, then we get urticaria vasculitis, and a whole host of secondary causes. Okay, my friends, this is a beautiful acronym taken from Approach to Internal Medicine by David Hui and company, outlining a beautiful approach to secondary causes of vasculitis. The mnemonic is vasculitis. <laughs> v is various drugs, so we know. Phenothiazines can cause it, hydranazine can cause it, purple thiouracil can cause it. Autoimmune causes like systemic lupus erythematosus, SLE, the wolf, ow, rheumatoid arthritis, Bechet's disease, relapse in polychondritis, serum sickness in the back of penicillin use, cryoglobin anemia, ulcerative colitis, low complement. There's a whole host of causes of low complement. It could be cryo, it could be lupus, it could be IgA nephropathy, shunt nephritis, post epilocal movement nephritis, it could be. Um, you know, neuronal proliferative or crescentic granulophytis. Infections, especially chronic viral infections, hepatitis B is a positive for this, as is hepatitis C, parvovirus, HIV, rickettsia, tumors like lymphoma, multiple myeloma, immunoglobulin A nephropathy or henaxion purpura, and smoking related thromboangitis of litterans. There you go, guys. Vasculitis is the acronym for causes of secondary vasculitic syndromes. Okay, my friends, what does it really mean to be saved? John 14, 6, Jesus says, Behold, I am the way, the truth, and the life. None comes to the Father but by me. The book of Acts tells us that there is no other name given under heaven by which men are saved except in the name of Jesus Christ alone. The book of Romans tells us, If a man confesses with his mouth and believes in his heart that Jesus Christ is Lord, then he shall be saved, him together with his household. What does it really mean to be saved? What's the evidence? You know, in, in clinical medicine, we look for evidence to back up a hypothesis or some kind of theory. So what is the evidence that we can look for that one is saved? So S is spiritual conflict when one sins. Spiritual conflict and guilt arise as a result of the conflict between the old nature and the spirit born new nature when one sins. The old nature does not disappear when one is born again. Galatians 5.17 says, For the flesh lusts against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary to one another, so that you do not do the things that you wish. A is for agape love. Love for one another. First John 3 14 uh, tells us we know that we have passed from death to life because we love the brothers. 
He who does not love his brother abides in death. Oh dear. Uh, the next one, excuse me, V is victory over the flesh, world, and Satan. And Romans 8.37 says we are more than overcomers in Christ who strengthens us. He is evidence of belief. First John 5, 1 John 5.1 Whoever believes that Jesus Christ is born of God and everyone who loves him, uh, who begot, also loves him, who is begotten of him. D is doing his will. First John 3.24 Now he who keeps his commandments abides in him and he in them. And by this we know that he abides in us by the spirit whom he has given us. So we always seek to do the will of the Father and be sensitive to the still small voice of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Amen. Have yourself a fantastic day. I'll see you soon with another rapid review in internal medicine. God bless you.